you talked about the getting drafted to the Jets. What was was there a moment early on at, in New York where you were like, "This isn't going well"? I mean, we kept four quarterbacks. Yeah. So it was me, Gino, Fitz, and Bryce. Mm. So like that media attention, that much focus. You take me 50, 50, whatever, 51, 52 overall in the second round. Like, there's expectations that come with that. Mm -hmm. And we got a loaded room. And Chan Gailey was there, who I love Chan as an X and O's guy. I loved him as a coach. But, like, he really wanted Fitz back. And he wanted Fitz because they just came off a pretty decent year the year before. So, like, there just wasn't opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm basically there trying to find myself and then, like, trying to figure out a role within the whole organization. Yeah. Because obviously there's people in the organization that invested enough in me to pick me in the second round. But then, so there was just a little disconnect there. And again, it was me just kind of not having the maturity to take the business approach that I then learned, but ultimately it was too late in my career because mm -hmm. I was already labeled and it was done. But I just never had the ability to, to, to have someone take me along that path because there was just so much dysfunction going on. There's so many, so many things going on a bunch of other ways so, like, um, again, I always take it as, like, a glass half full guy. Yeah. And, like, that experience helped me tremendously, and it's going to translate to other facets of my well, life. Yeah. But me being able to even say that now, I think, is uh, a t not a testament to myself. I'm not trying to beat my own chest. But, like, being able to have that conversation with yourself, I think, is really important. Like, for, yeah. and, and for anybody that's going through something, like, being able to look at a situation – dissect it in a very honest and matter of fact manner and say where there's definitely places where I came up short and I could have been better, but ultimately looking at the whole, at the whole picture, like I could have also done more things to look for help and ask for help and like try to try to bridge that gap quicker than I did yeah. from an actual like football performance, mental side of things. So, um, that maturity was what that whole New York experience was really about. And it felt like, you know, when you're in that New York media market, it almost feels like the New York media like gangs up on you a little bit. Did you feel uh, like that at all? hundred percent. Because I like, feel like they would only talk about the negative. They'd be like, Christian Ackenberger ever threw a ball at practice today. Like, like yeah, they wouldn't say that about any other quarterback. And threw three <laughs> touchdowns in seven on seven. Like, yeah. So it's like, they, they did. And I think it partially was me too, because I was a very easy target. Because again, like going back to the way I was raised, like never sell anybody out, never like be confrontational in those, in those mm -hmm. environments, like say the politically correct thing and keep it moving. Yeah. And I think that some of those guys up there and not all of them, there's some, there's some reporters up there that were very fair mm -hmm. and good, but usually the loudest ones and the ones that had the bigger imprints were those guys and they did it to everybody. Right. Yeah. And that's just part of that. That's, that's part of that media culture up there. Yeah. But um, hundred percent. I think I was probably the easiest one to pick on <laughs> and I wouldn't fight back like some other guys yeah. did just because it wasn't in my DNA. So, um, you know, that was an experience within itself.